I can remember hearing Fisher's Hornpipe for the first time really vividly because at the time I had just started playing mandolin and I had somehow stumbled across that Into the Cauldron duo record that Chris Thiele and Mike Marshall put out a long time ago. So I put in an order online for it. It came in the mail. I put that CD in my boombox and I was just blown away by hearing two mandolin masters take a traditional fiddle tune like this to places I couldn't even imagine. So I knew from that point that I had to learn this tune. <laughs> We're not gonna try to tackle Chris and Mike's crazy version of this tune, but I wanna show you a pretty standard version of this melody that people play at the Bluegrass Jam, and it's a version that I learned way back in the day. And the funny story is that after I learned it, I actually played this tune for my college audition on the mandolin because I wanted to major in music with the mandolin, but I didn't know what to play for a mandolin college audition. I don't think anyone knows, but this tune seemed like it really showed off the mandolin well, so I played it. And fast forward, a Bachelor of Science in Mandolin Music Performance later, I still love playing it, and there's some really fun things that you can do with this tune. And I wanna show you one thing that I actually did in my audition, which was playing this melody in a different octave. The A section works really well up the neck in a higher octave like this. And the B section works really well in a lower octave. It sounds like this. We also have to learn the chords and the original melody to this tune. So when you're ready, grab your mandolin and we'll start off by learning the structure to Fisher's Hornpipe. And first up, we're in the key of D major and there's four chords that we're gonna work with for this tune. You probably already know these, but just for review, here are the four open chord shapes that I would use. First up, we have D major. Next is G major. Then we have A. And then we've got E major. And if you want to, let's check out the chop shapes for these same chords as well. Here's your D chop, your G chop chord, A, and last up is your E chop. And I'm gonna use this fingering here with my pinky on the G string, just cause it's gonna make it easier to switch back and forth between the E and the A, which we're gonna do in the B section of this tune. But if you want to, you can also finger it just like your D chop chord, just two frets higher. And the chord progression is a little tricky just because there's a lot of changing chords. Check it out here on the A section for our tune. We change a chord almost every two beats. Starting with a D to a G, D to G, D to G, D to A. Then second line is D to G, D to G. Then we have one measure of A, back to D for a full measure. That A section repeats, and then the B section is a little easier with some longer chords, starting with a full measure of A, then D for a measure. A, here's your quick E chord, back to A, G for a measure, D. A, finishing with a D chord there really helpful to start with the chords of a tune first like this. That way you're ready to play this tune with other people right from the start. But once you've got the chord shapes and the chord progression down, now it's time to learn the melody. And there's a lot of notes in this one. So let's take a listen and see if we can get it in our ears. Now we're gonna walk through this melody phrase by phrase together and we'll have the tab and notation here on screen, but if you want your own copy of this PDF transcription to walk through things at a slower pace and come back to it on your own time, then you can grab that as well as the chord charts and the backing tracks that you hear in this video over on my Patreon page. There's a link in the cards above here. Thanks so much for checking it out. But when you're ready, let's kick things off with this first two measure phrase. So we have this hammer-on triplet at the beginning for our pickup measure. We're doing a hammer-on for the first two notes, and then an upstroke for the third. That way we have a downstroke on the very beginning of the next measure. And then it's all alternate picking from there, which is a little tricky because we're doing a lot of string hopping and arpeggiation of some chords. Check this out. And there's a lot of repetition in this tune. The next phrase kind of carries out the same idea. Just 
just a little chromatic walk down there in measure four. Otherwise pretty similar, right? The next line of our transcription and this third phrase is exactly the same as the first, right? And then these last two measures of the A, our turnaround phrase has some new material. Only trick again is that hammer-on triplet, which is setting us up for the repeat of the A section, but let's try this phrase before moving on. So take your time playing through those phrases separately, and when you're ready, we're gonna stitch them all together and play through this A section once with the backing track and transcription. A one, two, three, four. <laughs> So for the B section, we're gonna start with the last three notes of the second ending of the A section. That's gonna be our pickup into the downbeat of the B section. We're gonna start that for now with an upstroke on the open E string. That way we're setting up for another downstroke at the beginning of the B section. Here's what that's like in context. Another triplet here, this time we're doing a pull off triplet where we're playing a downstroke from the three to the two on the E string and an upstroke on the open E string. And still a lot of arpeggiation and string crossing going on here in the B section, so keep your right hand alternating with those beats here. Phrase two of the B section starts out similarly, but ends a little differently. Hammer on triplet here from the two to the three on the E string, upstroke on the two. Then on the last line here, for the third phrase of our B section, we're kind of breaking the phrase repetition that we had in the A section, and we have some new material here. Check this out. Watch out for this slide. It's on an upstroke from the two to the four. I like to use my middle finger there. And the turnaround phrase for this B section is actually different from our A section as well. <laughs> Lots of eighth notes there. It doesn't really sound like it resolves, but it's setting us up again for the repeat of our B section. But check out this turnaround phrase before we move on. Now is your chance to try out this B section, right? Let's see if we can play all four of these phrases together from start to finish with that backing track. Here we go. Now's your time to shine. See if you can play through this whole melody with me, both A sections and B sections. We're gonna play along with the backing track as always. The transcription's gonna be there as your safety net, but see if we can just jam out and have some fun. Pretend like you're Christy Lee, I'm Mike Marshall, vice versa. <laughs> Here we go. A one, two, three, four.
Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, a great next step for this one is to take that same melody and to play it in different octaves, right? Take a listen and see what you think. Okay, so that's a little scary playing this melody up the neck for our A section, but it lays out pretty nicely, so don't be too worried. Let's see what this first two measure phrase sounds like. This triplet at the beginning is a little bit harder now that we have our pinky in the game, but same idea, right? Just make sure you stick the landing with your fourth finger in for all those other pinky notes that we have here in this phrase. Phrase number two. That chromatic melody works pretty well here, right? Not too bad. Phrase three, remember, is the exact same as the first phrase of the A section, so you got this, right? The last two measures of the A is where things get a little hairy because we have to shift a bit further up the neck to get all those notes. Check this out. So we start out in the same position, but as soon as we hit the ninth fret on our E string, we're gonna shift up with that same finger up to the 10th fret, and then grab some notes with our pinky and our middle finger. And then when we land on our D note here on the 10th fret with our ring finger, that's where we're gonna shift back with our index finger to the fifth fret and finish out the rest of the phrase. Take your time with this one. Not too bad, right? See if you can get through this whole octave variation of the A section with that backing track and transcription. And here we go. A one, two, three, four. We have to find a way of getting down to the lower octave, so check out the second ending of our A section first to see how we get there. So the first few notes of this measure is exactly the same as it was in the first ending, but after playing our fifth fret with our index finger on the A string, then we're going to play an open A string and take that opportunity to shift down to the fifth fret on our D string with our ring finger. That's gonna set us up to get back in the normal position for the lower octave of this B section that we're gonna learn next. So let me play that second ending in context with the first two measure phrase of this B section. And the melody here in the B section is pretty much the same as it was in the original octave. We're still doing that pull off triplet. Now we have it from our ring finger to our middle finger ending with an upstroke on the second fret with your index finger. Try all that together with me now. Pretty straight ahead here for the second phrase of the B as well. Same idea as always with this hammer on triplet here. So for the third phrase here, this is where we run out of runway for the lower octave. We have to change a couple notes of the melody to fit within the limited register of the mandolin, but I think it still kind of sounds like Fisher's Hornpipe. See what you think. At least kind of sounds like the melody. Feel free to put in your own version of the melody here too. <laughs> And 
then we can get back on track for this turnaround phrase and play pretty much the same notes that we did in the original octave, just down here on our lower strings. Check this out. Still pretty twisty though, right? <laughs> Here you go, now it's time to play through that B section once with all those phrases stitched together. Here goes nothing. Are you ready to do this? Let's see if we can get through this octave variation, both A's and B sections, stitching those octaves together in this way and uh, hope for the best. Here we go. A one, two, three, four. <laughs> I love taking next steps with fiddle tunes like this, playing different octaves or playing the melody up the neck or variations or improvising, all sorts of stuff like that. Because I look up to folks like Mike Marshall and Chris Thiele and when you hear their version of this tune, you can totally tell they've done all sorts of crazy stuff with a melody like this. So I encourage you to keep experimenting with this one, see what else you can do. Combine those octaves together in different lengths if you want to. You can do an A section low, an A section high, um, B section low, B section high, anything like that. or Try improvising new variations on the melody. See if you can transcribe Chris and Mike and learn from their mastery. But until next time, I'll leave you with these other videos that you see here on screen. We've got some other tune lessons that you can check out. Again, check out Patreon if you want any of those extra benefits like the PDF transcription, the backing tracks, all sorts of other stuff out there. And um, just a huge thank you to your patrons for your support, for all you subscribers, for your subscribes and likes. And I'll see you in the next video.